back to another episode of Preparing for the Hunt that we've partnered with BNP. And today we're going to simulate pretty much uh, the most consistent type of shot that we're going to have when shooting the Eurasians. And we're going to shoot off of some towers. So we're going to shoot some left to right towers and some right to lefts and maybe some different angles as well within those. But I, I think we'll also show you how to implement different techniques on the same target just depending if we see the target late um, or we get caught off guard or something but if we see the target early and on time how we're going to implement um, a normal move on it and so um, from this first position here where we are we're going to shoot some left to right towers uh -huh. and so maybe let's take a look at these two targets and shoot them so this first target is going to be the left hand machine let's take a look pull hard break okay so i'm going to set up just like i normally would shoot this in competition um, one of the things though when we're shooting high birds especially if you're really learning how to wing shoot better anything that's above say a 45 degree angle we want to start narrowing our stance so my normal stance would be about just inside shoulder width apart when I'm shooting up this high, I'm gonna come about half, I'm gonna cut that distance in half. So my feet are pretty close together. They're about six inches apart inside of my feet, okay? And so that allows me to really rotate well. And so I'm gonna go through my game plan. I'm gonna shoot this target how I normally would with the sustained lead on it and break it a couple times. <clears throat> So one thing I also want you to notice is I'm angled a little bit further right than I normally would be. If I'm going to shoot this in a tournament situation, I'm probably going to be angled about here. But I'm angled further to the right just because if I am preparing for my hunting shooting window, I always want to line up for my furthest right shot that I could be taking because I can spin all the way back and shoot something over here. Okay, Let's do that shot again. Pull. One more time. Pull. Nice. So that's kind of my normal move, my normal sustained lead shot. Um, now let's kind of pretend that I get surprised by this target a little little bit so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna set my eyes as far back I'm just gonna kind of look maybe a little bit further out catch it late and then you know if I catch a target late I'm always gonna have a smooth mount but I'll probably have to let it come a little closer to my gun if not past my gun and then make a smooth move probably having to shoot it a little later pull Catch it. Yeah, so that one I had to come from very far behind. Saw it late, still had a smooth move, but was able to catch back up and kill it. So let's do that one more time. Pull. All right, so that one was um, really good execution of that. So one of the big things when you are hunting is having a smooth move. We always wanna, if we make a mistake, we're gonna tend to mount too fast, too quick, um, and too erratic. So we wanna go really smooth. Karen, do you wanna shoot some of those? Sure. Nice, babe. So awesome. That's your normal 
normal way, right? Yep, that was the normal All way. Right, so let's set up where you catch it late. Okay. Have that smooth mount. It's gonna pass your gun and you're gonna shoot a little later. Paul? Paul? Outstanding. Really good, babe. Yeah, definitely not the normal way to shoot it, but it is good to refine those moves um, and have a good move getting to that target even when you are beat. And that feel for me was just drawing it out a little bit longer, making sure I had that connection. Even though I'm coming from behind, smoothly stretching to the front and having that final matchup at the end is what really connected. Absolutely. Well, awesome. while you're hot, why don't you shoot the faster one off of this tower? Okay. And um, let's take a look at it, shoot it your normal way. Let's do the same thing. Okay. Then maybe we'll do a pair after that. Cool, perfect. Okay. All right, let's take a look at this target. On your call. Pull. 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 Those were absolutely smoked. Yeah, now, it felt really good. One of the things, babe, that um, maybe you could just explain to the viewers. So, you know, this will be conducive of like a really fast bird coming in, mm -hmm. you know, coming in from really hot and, um, you know, passing shot mm -hmm. that looked over your shoulder as I was watching, looked like it took a lot of lead. It did. How do you create that lead? How do you plan for that lead? And how do you feel confident enough to put that much on a target? It has to do with your eyes is what I'm feeling. Like you, if I think about just being a bird, you have to pay attention to the actual bird itself to get a good feel for how fast it's actually flying. Yeah. Um, and that's the feel when I see it at that target, I see that it is faster as it comes off of the machine traveling a long distance. So I just naturally am just trying to let my eyes match up to the target and then my hands just follow right behind that. That's good. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, let's maybe get beat catch a, little a little bit. Late okay. And see how that, how you can make a move on that. And I feel like the first target that we shot came from behind it. I feel like coming from behind this one, it will be even more difficult to get to that lead that it needs. But we can still do that as long as we get that matchup right at the end. Pull. Harder. Definitely way more difficult to get that. Um, probably would I be more comfortable if I saw that, didn't get surprised as much. I would prefer to kind of pull away from it, not let it get as close or beat me as, by as much. But you can't always control those things, so having those moves. Um, let's try a couple pull away. I think that would be a good move for this fast of a target. Pull. Nice. Yeah, that is definitely way more comfortable than swinging through that target. Um, but for me, most comfortable is that sustain. Yeah. But if I do get beat a little bit, having that good pull away. Shoot one more sustain for us okay. just to get that locked in your head. Because you're, you're gifted enough that you're going to be seeing these birds early and probably be able to shoot your normal sustain. Right. Pull. Pull. Nice. 
shop bag. Awesome. All right, let me try that one a couple times. Pull. <clears throat> Pull. Nice. All right, let me practice a couple where I don't see it early. So this one I'm going to plan in case I get beat by a lot to shoot it way later. Pull. Certainly a harder target to come from behind. One more of those. Pull. So one thing that I'm doing is when I am practicing that, I'm setting my eyes out here in the soft focus rather than right next to the machine in soft focus. And so you're just a little bit more surprised by it. Um, and you know, that'll happen in the hunt. So that's some left to right shots. Now let's do uh, the same thing on some right to left shots. We've got a fast one and a slow one. Let's start with a slower target. You got it. Number eight. Pull. Bang. So right to left. We're a little bit closer than last time, so a little bit less lead. But once I think about my spots, I'm just going to visualize going nice and smooth, matching the speed. Pull. So if we can shoot a live bird like that with the nice, soft, smooth mount as it connects to our gun, match its speed, we're going to kill a lot of live birds like that. That's the ultimate in wing shooting is when you can just stay nice and smooth. Let's do that one more time. Pull. All right, now let's see if we can get beat a little bit. I'm gonna position my eyes out here. Pull. Now I picked that one up a little late. Didn't do a true sustain, I didn't feel like. It came a little closer, but it didn't beat me because that bird is pretty slow. Um, let's try it one more time. Pull. Nice. Spent a little bit more time connecting with that one, so that felt real good. Let's do the fast one. Bang. All right, so this one's going to need a little bit more lead because it's faster. I'm going to shoot it right about here. Pull. Pull. Nice. Now this will definitely be a good one to practice seeing it late and catching up. Pull. That one beat me by quite a bit. I had to play a big catch up with it. Let's do it one more time. Pull. Nice. Awesome. All right, Karen, let's have you smack these.
Pop. Nice. Pick it up late? Yes, pick it up late. Pull. Thank you, thank you. All right, now we're gonna get beat a little bit, see that second target a little bit later. Pull. Awesome. Yeah, has a good feel. Um, what, even when you're surprised a little bit later, you can still make that really good move. Having a great pivot to start off and have that connection start early, even if you don't see the target as early. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, if you have access to some towers, uh, you know, practice this stuff mm -hmm. on towers, especially you know, if you are preparing for a Eurasian dove hunt or mm -hmm. going to Argentina or you know any passing type of of shots and um and so it, it's really beneficial to be able to have towers like this Absolutely. you know so the one tower that we shot from left to right was set at about 50 feet in the air or so and the other one right to left set about 40 feet in the air mm -hmm. we could go up way higher and if we practice uh for going to england or something like that shooting you know really high driven pheasants and targets like that, we would set the targets up a lot higher. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, get a video to you about that, preparing for, for that type of hunting in the future. Thank you so much for joining us on another episode. And uh, hopefully you guys learned some things and we will see you next week. <laughs>